Welcome back, dear friends. It's another day, a very exciting day, because I've got, amongst other things, painted pots, cut copper. I've even got some curly copper pipe. Brilliant. Made of this wonderful six millimeter diameter annealed copper that you can bend really nicely and shape beautiful. And all sorts of other electronicals. Most importantly, I've got the um, the clocks, the two clocks, the identical ones, chronological engines, finished with all the excitingness that we speak not of on the back. So that's nice, and they're working because I've got them programmed and checked. So today's wonderful job is to start putting them all together because I've even got the two lovely wooden baseboards done, all stained and polished and beautiful, with the owls in, which allow me to get to all the unmentionables once it's all fitted together. What a lovely project for today. Let's get on with it. Well, the first job is to glue this part of the control arm to this part, which leaves the impression of a beautiful little lens that travels over the engraved parts that tell you which function you've selected. Now I used to do that by hand, which led to some, where's the little mark, there's a mark somewhere on here to try and help me, but it inevitably failed. So, dear friends, last night I thought I'd quite make another jig up. Can't be, beat a good jig. You know the off cuts that I used to cut those bits out of, and I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, stick them over one another, then you can line them up perfectly and glue it together. I'll give that a go now. Anyway, so that bit's getting the light out of the way. So that bit just fits under there, and then this bit just sits in here, and it fits perfectly because it was obviously cut out of it. And there's the 0.25 millimeter, 0.025 millimeter gap, the width of the laser beam. Now the only danger with this is once I've put a little ring of super glue around here and then put it together, it's going to squeeze out and glue everything to the jig. Fingers crossed it won't. Oh, what a lovely jig. It is an absolute joy. It's now got so much information on it and it's so helpful. I'm so thrilled I remember to make it last time. Again, each time making these machines, coming up with better, you know, improvements. It just fits onto the baseboard, shows me exactly where everything has to line up. It's a joy. So I can sit the clock onto there and know where to drill, pilot hole, drill the holes. I've also got the little spirit levels in, which is, they just look so nice. I found, in fact, that they need a little strip of this self-adhesive aluminium duct tape. Duct tape. Because otherwise, if, against the dark surface, you can't really see the little bubble. Oh, so exciting. Like so. Now I can screw it down. You want a bell to ring? Well, here's one way you could do it, which I found is most successful. A lovely AV, audio-visual motor from something like a cassette player, or a turntable even. I can't remember what number this is, but it runs off 5 volts. And I've wired it with a diode across it to stop any back EMF, because it's just going to receive a pulse. And the way I discovered to do it, which is really bleed and obvious when you think about it, but isn't until you thought of it, is that the bell's over here, the motor's there, the hammer's hanging down here, is to give it a quick pulse so it lifts the hammer up, then switch it off, the hammer fling, falls back under gravity, hits the bell, and then stays back. If you try and drive it against the bell, it hits the bell and then stays there and stops the bell from vibrating. Much better the other way. And then to make the hammer and things, you could use these. They're M4 dome nuts, brass dome nuts, with a little bit of studding and I've just bent a piece of spring steel wire um, to support them, like, if I can find it, follow my finger looking through, oh here you are, here's one I prepared earlier, and that is perfect. It's got enough weight and looks lovely and just motor drives it back, it swings back, hits the belt and then comes to rest vertically. So. That's lovely, which is what goes in there. Look, it's screwed down, there I see it. And this bit holds the motor and also the PIR sensor. 
So that's what I'm getting done now. I don't want to blow me in trumpet or flute. I'm just standing here, I'm just spray painting something, I'm about to take the dog out, just waiting for the extract fan to suck out the worst of the fumes before I go. I'm standing here looking at this, and I just think, oh, it's just beautiful. I'm so pleased with it. Whatever you, wherever you look at this from, and normally you wouldn't see this without all the extra bell ringing bit on, but just that curve and the ridges and the gap underneath and the copper and this and the red just peeking out. I'm so pleased with it. This is what's so incredibly enjoyable about the Victorian era sort of steampunk design type things. It's gorgeous, the reflection with all the shadows and the reflections. Oh. Anyway, calm down, deep breaths. I'll take the dog out. Look, it's got twiddly bits on and spinny control valves. What a joy, it's really enjoyable getting all that set up and tweaked with this lovely softened copper pipe. Now, job today, get the control lever lined up with its little magnets that hold it in place, help to hold it because it's a very long lever and the little pivot and the sprung Ball bearings or balls inside the switch don't aren't really sufficient anyway. <laughs> Probably overkill. Now in the past I marked it all out using this wonderful jig. Only to realise that because of sort of compound differences that can build up, it never lined up properly. So this time I haven't done anything else. I've just made me send a little jig. I was thinking about it in the park the other day. As simple as that. Because then what I did wherever this ends up clicking to, I just slid it underneath use that to mark the centre of the hole which I've now used my forstner bit to cut little rebates in ready for the labels in fact these labels obviously I have to glue them in the right place but that's quite a nice job to glue in and a top tip if you want to glue things like this in that are circular and you can get completely the wrong way up or in a slot in the wonk is to use a bit of cello tape transparent cello tape, sticky tape and then you put the glue on and then you can just use that to line it up and lower it into place. It turned what was an almost impossible job trying to do it with blue tack, which obviously covers up what you're trying to see to level up, into a really enjoyable job. Right, let's get them worked out and stuck in, in the right order, hopefully. I needed some very strong Neobidi um, magnets. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. I was looking on RS and they were sort of uh, three pounds each and I thought we'll just check Amazon I managed to get 20 I think or 30 um, for five quid delivered the next day how lovely six millimeter diameter by three millimeter look I've drilled having set this all up using the little hole for the other magnet to um, mark through drill six millimeter holes put a bit of super glue in and then just put the end in twist it and it's a magnet sticks in isn't that lovely? And I've got a small magnet from some other source, probably RS, to glue in here under a piece of red felt, or they're going to sit under a piece of red felt, which I will now glue on. This is almost too much for words. I've got my other little magnet just pushed really tightly in there. I don't need any glue there. I've stuck the felt on with some Bostic sort of, uh, rubber cement stuff. And look, that's amazing. You can see it lines up perfectly with the clicks on the switch, but, oh, that is just gorgeous. It really snaps between each position. I'm going to have to do that a few more times. That is working beautifully. So, another top tip, if you need to have some sort of locating device, magnets. They're the way forward, especially with the neobdium neolium. They are so powerful. That's incredible. Right. Stop doing that because I've now got the top bit 10 millimeter thick to go over the top to provide extra support. Obviously none of this is actually necessary but it does look lovely and I do like a challenge and I do like things that go thud. Look. Oh. Well I'll get that together with another, I've got another bit of a felt to stick on the underside of that, hence the fact it's covered in masking tape because I didn't want to have to glue on to paint. I'll get that together and get back to you. Oh, will come over strange. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, how lovely. And it just it took ages to design this shape. It's always the way when you sort of, you know, 
things that look right, hopefully it looks right, do take an awful lot of, lot of effort when you think about the function they've got to fulfil and aesthetics with this sort of thing to get it to look right, how to fix it and all the rest. So I'm very pleased with that. That's lovely with a little wooden knob on the end. Great. So it's all coming on. So now I need to go and do that. To the other one, I may even make some notes, copious notes, to remind me that this really does work doing it this way. I am so pleased it's gone so well. I've got both of them done now. And they just work beautifully with double magnets. I think the first time I used steel screws along the bottom, five steel screws and just a single magnet, but that wasn't anywhere as lovely as that. Oh no, oh look. There's ten Peppa Pig magnetic scribblers. Fantastic. Ready for the scribulator. And every time I find one that's the right size, which I mentioned in the last video, they change it, they scrap it and replace it with ones that get increasingly smaller and they get smaller and smaller children or photoshop them sitting behind playing with them. I don't know whether there's a picture on. Oh yes, look that. They all, all the photos look like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. They must shrink the child down, put this in the foreground and then when you get them they're, they're minute, microscopic I tell you. So there's ten, I can build ten scribulators. Not all, all, not all at once, I hasten to add. Now, sadly, my wife's ill upstairs again on her day off, um, so I can't make lots of noise soaring things, so I'm going to put these two assemblies together. Aren't they lovely for the PIR sensors? With those lovely bits I made ages ago, and screw them all together, and then that's what sits <coughs> on the front of here. And I can't put this on yet, because I need to sort out a power supply coming into it. In fact, here's how I worked it out this morning. I've just had to actually sort this out. One customer is going to have three machines and they're all going to connect up. There's the barometric prognosticator and you're going to have a link plug in there and a plug in there. And the other customers have two machines It's going to have a link and a plug in there that loop together like mine do in the kitchen. So in order to achieve that, I use this which is antique brass shower hose which is perfect what's even more perfect about it is you've got a useful bit of rubber tube inside which I use in the net throubles but you can pass um, a cable wires through it without any problem at all and at each end there's even a plumbing fitting which is compatible with standard plumbing fittings now that's all well and good, I hear you cry. That's great because it'll look nice and then you can feed wires through and things. What happens if you need a plug and socket? Well, a couple of years ago I was absolutely thrilled to find if you get one of those, they actually come with, I think it's a tap connector or something, I can't remember. They come with a little flange here which you can drill off. And that means with this wonderful connector, I've got the three pole version. It actually, once you've taken it out of its little housing, it sits, come on, it sits beautifully in there. Look at that. And then you can solder the wires on and then glue it in with Araldite or epoxy resin sort of stuff. So there's the plug. And then obviously the shower pipe actually pushes into that. You can glue it directly in. Oh, splendid, splendid. And then the socket, or in fact, technically this is the plug, there's the equivalent one. If you turn that down to 15 millimeters diameter, because it's just over the threaded version that it, as it comes, because it's sort of to fit through a panel. Look, it fits in that fitting. And again, glue it in with Araldite. And then you've got two pieces that actually plug together, look great, which actually transmit electrical through them. How exciting. I think that's tomorrow's project, because I've run out of Araldite, so I've had to order some. Anyway, let's get on with these things. Look, so much clear space and flat surfaces to put things on. There's a thing. The other one is sitting on there still because this very morrow I've tidied up and put, packaged up the next 21 or whatever it is, net net throttle kits and they're all on the hanging shelf of stock. So that's nice. Now today's job is to work out how to get a power connector here. Because we've got the power connector here that comes in from the plug-in USB type adapter. But we need one for the output. Now I did put this here, 
just purely decoratively. But with Jerk's one, with his barometric prognosticator, he wants to link it with one of these pipes to whatever one that is. So I need some way of fixing one of these down here. I'll get back to you when I've got an idea. Don't try this at home, but I've discovered that I really saw cracked thumb. And in the end, I go up and just put some super glue on it and squeezed it together, and it's just stopped it moving, stopped the pain, and it's now healing properly. Isn't that fantastic? And then the same day later, I cut myself stupidly at really annoying positions. So every time I try and pick up something, it flexes the cut and it really hurts. And it's come loose again, so I'm going to squeeze it together and put a drop of super glue on it. Oh, well, that's more than a drop, I can't see what I'm doing. Smooth it in nicely. Don't try this at home, obviously, because it would be very easy to stick. My, I hope, no, I haven't stuck my thumb to it. I've had quite a lot of practice with super glue, and it should have stuck now. It's amazing. And now, there's no pain. I can squeeze it, move it, everything else, and the super glue's just stuck the edges together. What a great idea, but as, as I say, I don't recommend it. Don't try it at home. So this is what I'm talking about. Here's the length of this tube. I've got a normal standard plumbing fitting screwed onto at one end, and on the other end, it's perfect this pipe, it's just the right size to push inside a piece of 15mm copper, and then, I've just glued that on with super glue, and that then fits into there, glue that in, and then this flat end, like I said, that I drew it down before, losing everything, I've soldered one of these onto the end of a piece of 3 amp cable. I use this simply because it's 3 amp which carrot conducts lots of a nice loss of current and has got this outer sheath to protect it against any rough bits in the pipe which there shouldn't be but there you go. So what I'm going to do now is to glue that into the end of that and then I'll be able to connect that onto the new I think someone's trying to tell me something it's not time yet, Ziggy. Give it a little bit more time. Let me get on with me work. Yes. This bit, which is how I've ended up doing it, like I just mentioned. And there's the socket in there, or in fact it's a, a plug, because it's got the prongs on that bit. That's all gone together really nicely, and that looks nice. It's just balanced beautifully. And now I'm suspending them on the hanging shelf of stock because I need to work out the length, where's my finger gone, there it is, the length of the pipe to link them together and then to link this one onto the next one. Lovely. Here's the back of the barometric prognosticator 3. So, power comes through here from the plug-in USB adapter into there, off to the barometric prognosticator but also now comes over to here and back out the front to here. Fabulous. I'm going to hang it up and see if they work. Oh, how sad. My oh, soldering on's finally given up the ghost. I noticed the last few days it seemed to be sort of switching on and off of its own accord. I finally opened it up and checked the uh, resistance across the filament and it's, it's blown, it's mega ohms. Oh, I've had that for so long. Never mind, because I remembered I had another one, the same size, which I haven't used really at all. So that's good. In other news, I've got this hung up and all the wiring inside has been done, except I haven't put the fuse in for this particular one because I want to check that I've got the um, positive and naught volts the right way around. Let's plug it in and try it. Here's the plug, and here's the doodah. Right, what's going to happen? Hopefully, a couple of things. The lights come on, and that's starting up, which is really nice. Now, I haven't tried this one with the new um, wireless monitor. So what hopefully should happen is it should play the national anthem, sort of. It's finding zero at the moment. So now 
right, start it up. Now what we want, because none of these um, weather indicators are alight, we want it to play that, yes! Oh, I'm so thrilled. I can't tell you, as you know if you've been watching these videos, trying to find a wireless weather sensor as Oregon have stopped making them all. I'm thrilled. So that is now receiving data from the wireless thing. Now what we need to do is to plug uh, this into here. Find the right way around. Obviously, the camera's on, so I'm not going to be able to find... There it is. Right. Now let's... Oh, look. Things are happening. 4.95 of your very best Viltaires. How lovely. So I have got the wires the right way around. I can now put the fuse into this one, the chronological engine, and see whether that works. Half amp fuse in. And it's moving. Now, will it remember the right time? Because it's several days since I last connected this up. It's fading up beautifully. I don't know what time it is now. I've got a rough idea. 5.35ish. Brilliant. It's not the right time, is it? Because <laughs> right next to it is the right time. And I've just checked with my other clocks and that is the right time. It's sort of... 17 minutes past six, whereas this one says it's 5.40. Now, I can't remember whether I was, I think, when I was testing it, I'm going to go with this idea because it's more palatable, that I was fiddling around and checking whether the adjuster worked. So I'll now set this, hopefully. Oh, a lovely clunky switch. Set to chronograph time. Let's, oh, it's wretched fluorescent lights. Right, let's try and set this. Right, that's moving. Let's go a little bit more. That's six. And... Oh! A little bit more. It's very... It's, what's this, what I love about this clock? The fact that the hands go the wrong way and... Nothing quite works as you think it will. Well, what I'm doing is twisting this a little bit. Right, a little bit more. Is that nearly right? It's nearly on the four. A couple more clicks. And there we have it. So that's now set. We'll now change that back to display chronograph time. Right, now I'm going to leave that running. 24 7 to check that both clocks <laughs> do stay actually showing the same time now time to run the connector from this one the revelator to there get that one working oh it doesn't get much better than this this is so much fun look dear friends i've just connected up this one it's faded up hopefully it'll do something so that's now fed off the chronological engine how exciting! It's going through showing me, well, simulated last 24 hours of pressure readings. Ah, oh, and it's moving. How exciting! And there are all the scenes going by. It always rotates at least once around when it changes the pressure, displays it. Just that you can hear the chimes and see all the different scenes. Ah. Oh, I'm thrilled, all three machines working beautifully. Thanks very much for watching. Hope this was an enjoyable video. Look forward to seeing you next time. As always, if you want any help, support or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks again. Oh, and remember, I always forget to say this. Remember to click subscribe and the bell button on the bits and pieces on YouTube. Thanks again.